The New Estate Baptist Church Media presents The Living Word of God We believe the message you're about to listen to Will touch your spirit and soul Have a life-changing fellowship with the Lord Through the power of His Word May His glory shine through you forever Amen
and his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Zero. 
Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah is the King. Of is He Messiah in your life? Messiah is the Lord. If He's the Lord. Messiah.
mama to rookie mama mama Father, you are beautiful for all situations. You are beautiful beyond description. You are inherently good. You are imperially powerful. 
you are immortally graceful you are impartially merciful we thank you father because you are here already glory be to your holy name glory be to your holy name can you just wave your hands unto him glory be to your holy name glory be to your holy name father will exalt you we magnify you we adore you we are the people of your we are your children lord you are our god we are so fortunate oh god to be your children we'll exalt you thank you everlasting god Blessed be your holy name. Please, before you sit down, let's sing our hymn together from the bulletin. Ancient word. Personalize it now. Ancient words and changing me and changing you. I have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient May that word impact your life this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Many times we find ourselves in different situations that may want to 
make us to do great harm to our tomorrow. We want to encourage you this morning. No matter what may, you may be going through, don't allow it or don't allow the step or the decision you are taking today to jeopardize your tomorrow. You just put your hands in God's hand and say to yourself, you can make it because your life in his, his hand. to turn to your neighbor, preach to them, say, your life is in God's hands. Come on, let's say it like we mean it. Say, your life is in God's hands. Hallelujah. Those troubles, troubles they, don't last. they have an expiry date. For there's a friend named Jesus. Oh, there's a friend in Jesus. Oh, I love him, I love him. Who will wipe your tears away? And in case you're here, and if your heart is broken, all you have to do is lift those hands. Just lift your hands and say, and say to yourself, oh, I know, I know that I, I can make it. Make it. I know that I can stand. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come. No matter what may come my way. I'm confident because my life, my life is, is in the hands of God. Your hand. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. And don't you be afraid. You see, weeping may endure for a night. But joy in comes morning. in the morning light and every bit of your trouble they have an expiry date. Hallelujah. There's a friend in Jesus. He's gonna dry every single oh, tear. Wipe your tears away. And just in case your heart is broken, and your heart is broken raise your hands in confidence and just wave it to Jesus and say to yourself, I know, oh, I know that I'm not gonna give up. I know that I can stand. Even when no matter what comes, make up my way. Say my life is in, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With Jesus, I can take it. Say with Him, I know I can stand. With Him, I know I can stand. No matter what, no matter what. And trials, your tests and trials, they seem to weigh you down. They seem down. to get you down. And every single person you know, and all your friends and loved ones, they left you all alone. I know where to. Oh, I want you to remember one single thing. There's a friend named Jesus. Named Jesus. Oh, I love him so much. Just in case your heart is broken. Stand up on your feet and say to yourself, Hallelujah! Hallelujah!
your chest and say, I know that I can stand. Because the greater one will make my way inside of me. Make up my way. My life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can grab it. With Jesus, I
Jesus in the house, please, everybody. Put those hands together. Let's celebrate Jesus in the house. Let's celebrate Jesus in the house. Let's celebrate Jesus in the house. Let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the El Shaddai, the Adonai, the Lord who is King. There is none like Him, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Let's celebrate the one who was, who is, and who will be forever. Let's celebrate the Waymaker, the Waymaker, our Waymaker. Let's celebrate our Waymaker. Let's celebrate our Waymaker. Come on, celebrate the Lord of Lords. Let's celebrate El Shaddai. Let's celebrate Adonai. Let's celebrate Elohim. Let's celebrate the bright and the morning star. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's celebrate the one who says yes and no one can say no. The one who opens the door and no one can shut it. The one who says no more and nobody can say yes. Let's celebrate our healer. Let's celebrate our healer. Let's celebrate our deliverer. I'd like us to celebrate our deliverer. Let's celebrate our Savior, our Savior, our Savior, our God, our friend, our lover, our helper. Let's celebrate our helper, the one who gives to us all good things. Let's celebrate our God. Hey, let's celebrate our God. Let's celebrate our God. Let's celebrate our God, the one who brings us out of the mighty clay and puts us upon a stomach, a rock stand to stand. He brings us out of the slimy pits and puts us upon a rock to stand and gives up a song to sing. Let's celebrate the one who was, who is, who will be forever. Jehovah Almighty, our soon coming King, our soon coming King. Let's celebrate him in the house. Glory to Jesus. Celebrate the awesome God. Let's put our hands together one more time. Celebrate this awesome God. Celebrate this awesome God. Celebrate this awesome God. I want you to celebrate this awesome God. Is He awesome to me, to you? Let's celebrate this awesome God. This awesome God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. You may be seated like us to take a testimony of what the awesome God has been doing in our lives continuously at work in us. I'd like to listen to Sister Fumi Jamabiso who will be sharing a quick testimony in a minute because this God is awesome and he is doing awesome things in our midst. Amen. 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 
You are welcome to New Estate Baptist Church, the Center for Extraordinary Miracles. I always say that that statement is not just to hype anybody, but it's a living reality. It is what we experience on a daily basis in New Estate Baptist Church. If you key into that word and you believe it, the Lord performs it in your life. I'd like to listen to our sister as she brings this testimony of the work of this awesome God. Praise the Lord. Modupe Mofi Foluwa. Modupe Mofi Foluwa. Modupe Mofi Foluwa. Last Wednesday, I we woke up in the morning. Everything was normal. I went to work. I came back. There was nothing wrong with me. I did what I had to do with the children and everybody. But the thing is, uh, my husband doesn't stay in Lagos during the week. He comes only home only on Fridays. So when we finished everything we had to do, we um, we did our prayers and we went to bed. Everybody was okay. I just woke up in the middle of the night about. Um, to two or two, I'm not very sure now. I found out that I was having problem breathing, difficulty, serious difficulty breathing. I was like, what's this? But you know, I was struggling. I was really struggling for my life because I'd never seen something like this before. It was like my airway was closed. I couldn't take in oxygen. But my son was sleeping on the bed beside me, the small one. I, I had gone through all that for a while, but it got to a point I knew that I needed help. And I couldn't talk. So the only thing that came to my mind was, I just pulled the, the, um, the top of his boxers, you know, his elastic. I pulled it very hard and I left it. So he opened his eyes. When he saw the way I was, he thought I was probably choking on the food I ate over the night. So he quickly went to get me water. I couldn't take the water from him. I was breathing very heavily. I don't know if anybody has seen anybody that is asthmatic. That's the way I was breathing. I've never been asthmatic in my life. So I was running around in the room, hoping that my airway would open up, but it did not. So I felt pressed, and I went into the bathroom. I sat on the toilet, and that was all I remembered. I just remembered myself sitting down, and I didn't know anything again. And it was just my children and I in the house. I think the small one now went to call the brothers. Anyway, by the time I opened my eyes, I saw myself on the floor. And you know, they had poured water and all over that on me. And um, when I was able to talk, they said, no, another thing that happened is, when I opened my eyes, I saw them holding my phone because there's a password on my phone. So they didn't have access to my phone and they couldn't call anybody. So the first thing they were asking me was, mommy, what is your password? Mommy, what is your password? So I was able to just mutter it and they heard. So they started calling. So I said, how did I get to the floor? They said, Mommy, when we came, we met you sitting down, and your head was rested on the, um, the water system. So I said, how did I not get on the floor? The said, you were, you were wanting to fall to hit your head, so we quickly came for you, and we just helped you and put you on the floor. So I can imagine what would have happened. Then Tony, that little one, said, Mommy, you were not breathing. Your tummy was not going up and down. We were just praying that, God, you will not die. That was the only thing they could say. So they said, OK, mommy, get up. Let us go. I come and go and rest in the room. I said, I can't walk. I'm very tired. I'm exhausted. So I said, you know, they started crying again when I said I couldn't get up. So I now had to crawl to the bed, and they helped me the bed. But in the interim, they went, because I had given them my password, they had started, they called Pastor Dari, they called Pastor Kunak, they had called my husband, they called everybody they could call. But I was awake, then it's just that I wasn't strong. But I thought about something. It's not that I've not been hearing it. I've been hearing it. But something dawned on me that day. That, you know, anybody's time will be up anytime, without even any prior notice. 
if God, if it was God's will that day, I would have gone, and there was no notice. People would just be like, but I saw her, I saw her, nothing was wrong with her. That is the way it happened. So for me, I mean, it's, it, 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 this God has really made more sense to me now that it's not just mouthing it, mouthing it. You have to do it and show that, yes, there is God that lives. So I'm just thanking God this morning because God has not made my children mother. He has not made my husband a widower. And the church of God is not mourning over me. Praise the Lord. Can we pray together? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your intervention in the life of your daughter. We thank you, O oh God, because whatever came on her or against her that night, you stood for her. The blood of Jesus answered for us. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that today she is alive to testify. You are the God of our wonders and miracles. In this place, you have continued to do extraordinary things. We want to return the glory to you. You have given her her life back, and we pray today, O oh God, that you will keep her in good health. Every satanic interruption in her life today, we banish it in Jesus' name. And we pray today, O God, that every damaged artery or vein in her body, we ask, O God, for a total recovery and quick re restoration in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we come against the spirit of death. Hovering around about, O God, we declare that this victory that has been won is permanent in the name of Jesus. She will live to complete her days, fulfill her assignment, and, be, and bring glory to your name in the name of Jesus. Oh God, our Father, we pray that you remove fear from her heart. Grant her confidence and boldness to declare that she has survived, she has made it, she will make it. In the name of Jesus. I pray for her husband that your hand will be upon him. That as he goes back and forth, O oh God, from Abel Kuta to this Lagos, every week grant him divine protection. The enemy will not send his arrow in the direction of the husband, neither in the direction of the children, in the name of Jesus. This family has defeated the enemy. We have overcome the devil, and this victory is ours together in the name of Jesus. We cover you with the blood of Jesus. We cover your family with the blood of Jesus. We cover your children with the blood of Jesus. And we declare that you will enjoy your life in an abundant measure in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Eternal Father. We return the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For this God is our God forever. give a clap offering to the Lord Jesus. Let's celebrate the one who intervenes for us. The one who is there at night, even when the husband is not there. The one who is there, even when your brother, your sister, your, your father, your mother is not there. The one who never goes to sleep. Whose eyes are ever open, running to and fro the entire universe, who never goes to slumber. Because of which we are preserved, because of which we are kept, and we are kept in the night, we are kept in the day, we are kept as we travel, we are kept as we return, we are kept when we are strong, we are kept even when we are weak. We, will body is there to help us, he is our helper. This God is our God, and forever he is our God. He will be our God even to the very end. May the name of the Lord be glorified in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Your testimony is next. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. I say your testimony is next. Amen. Because God will do miracles in your life that will cause you to testify. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was in Kaduna when I got that distress call from her elder sister. Sister Rebecca, 
uh, Aramide, Aribike, the wife of Brother Fred, called me. That was around about 10 minutes to 3 in the morning. I got the call the first time, then I got the second time. I picked it and I heard it was Sister Aramide. And she said, Pastor, please pray. I said, what is the matter? And she was sharing with me what was going on concerning her, elder, her sister. We began right there to pray. The children called me and I said, give your mommy the phone. Let's pray together. We prayed and we thank God. In the morning I called again and she was much better. And thank God by the evening of that day when I, was, when I flew into Lagos, I called again. That was Thursday. And thank God she was fine. And today she is here. We want to give glory to God. Amen. The devil will never steal from us. What belongs to us, God will keep for us. Amen. I'd like you to take your, your, Bible, your, your bulletin. Let's look at the prophetic word together and declare it very quickly as we receive the word of God. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3. It's written there on your bulletin. We'll, read, we'll speak it as a prophecy one to another and the Lord will bring it to pass. Let's stand together. One to go. The Lord shall pour water to quench your thirst and floods upon your dry ground. Amen. Let's say it again. The Lord floods upon your dry ground. Say it to a brother and sister around you. The Lord Will you say it to yourself now? The Lord. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, your word will never go back to you void. It will accomplish your purpose in the lives of men. As we have spoken, so it shall be. We shall receive, O oh God, the outpouring of your water to quench every thirst in our hearts in the name of Jesus. You will release floods upon our dry grounds, O oh God, and they shall be made wet in the name of Jesus. Father, O oh God, we thank you because this word shall be performed by your mighty hands and we shall be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. While you are still standing, look at the scriptures together with me. Genesis chapter 25. We read from verse 27 to the end. Genesis chapter 25. We read from verse 27 to the end. If you are there, please... Uh, follow with me. Genesis chapter 25. We read from verse 27 to verse to the end. Verse 34. Are you there? Genesis chapter 25. Reading from verse 27. And stopping at the end of the verses. When the boys grew up, Esau became a skilled hunter and a man of the open fields. But Jacob was an even-tempered man, living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for fresh game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked some stew. And when Esau came in from the open fields, he was famished. Another word there is he was hungry. So Esau said to Jacob, Feed me with some of your red stuff or your red stew. Yes, this red stew. Because I'm starving. This is why he was called Edom. But Jacob replied, First, sell to me your birthright. Look, Esau said, I'm about to die. What use is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear an oath to me now. And so Esau swore an oath to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. Esau ate and drank. Then he got up and went out. And so Esau despised his birthright. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today that you will speak your word to us and help us to comprehend your mind and help us to apply it appropriately for the deliverance of our lives, for the deliverance of our families, for the deliverance of our nation. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Let's be seated. God blessed the family of our brother Isaac with two children. If you read the story, Rebecca had given birth or had taken in. She was conceived and it turned out that she began to feel some jostling in her womb and in her you know, it was, she was very restless. There was too much kicking, too much activity in that pregnancy. And the woman began to wonder, what could this be? What's happening to me? This is strange. And I, I have preached on this pulpit on a witness day about, I mean, on that particular text, taking Rebecca, uh, uh, you know, her example, when she had a crisis, when she had a challenge, when she had something she could not understand its source, when she was troubled, what she did. The Bible says that she went to inquire of the Lord. She went to inquire of the Lord to know what was going on in that stomach, in that her womb. And then the Lord said to her, there are two nations in you. And told her everything about the children that were inside of her. Only then did she know that she was carrying a twin pregnancy. She, the Lord told her what was going to be the lot of those children and their future. If she had not inquired of the Lord, just trying to know what was going on with the struggle in her womb, she would not have known such details about the future of the children she was carrying. But for this morning, our subject is not particularly the examining, the, the, the inquiring of, of the woman. But her subject is on one of the two boys. The Bible says the, Lord, the day came, they were delivered, they grew up, and each of them took to a career in life. One was a hunter, and the other person was a shepherd back at home. The person who was a hunter was always out on the fields to, you know, seek for game. And every time he got... He brought home. The father loved him so much because he loved bush meat. So every time he came back, he came with game and the father enjoyed it. The guy was also a good cook. When he brought what he brought, he also prepared it and brought it to the father. The father enjoyed it each time he went out. I can imagine Isaac always saying, the Lord go with you. I can imagine him when the, when the young boy says, Dad, I'm going again. He says, yes, the Lord go with you. May the Lord give you the, the product or the, the product of the field. May the Lord cause every antelope and every, uh, 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 what is it, grass cutter to come your way. And may your arrow hit them and without any fail. So you can come home with game for me. No wonder when that man was dying, you remember? When that man was dying, the only thing he wanted to excite him and, give, and to cause him to release a blessing was what? What he was used to eating from that young man. He said, go to the field, get me game, come and prepare me that kind of pepper soup that I love enjoying so that I can eat it and that my soul might be merry and then I can bless you before I go. So that was the trade of this man, Esau. And this other boy sat at home, was always around taking care of the animals of the family. And the Bible says the mother loved him. So there was a mother's boy and there was a father's boy. Esau was daddy's boy, while Jacob was mommy's boy. Praise the Lord. And the Bible tells us that a day came in one of the days when he went out to the field and he came back. He must have been tired. And not only was he tired, the Bible particularly says that he was hungry. In fact, very hungry. And so, he came back. He may have come with game, but the game was yet what? Raw. It will take some time to prepare it. He came back and found his younger brother with food ready. His own will, will have to wait for some time before it will be ready. But the crisis of his hunger at that time was to him like a death sentence. He, couldn't, he didn't think he could wait any further with the way he was feeling. Listen, there is a way you get hungry and your body is shaking. I don't know whether you've been hungry that much. A way you get hungry and your body is literally shaking. 
There is a way you get hungry that you justify that uh -uh, Shebi is 3 o'clock. What's the difference between 3 and 6 on the day you are fasting? When you have come in from, from, the, from the first watch from 6 to 9 and the second watch from 9 to 12 and the third watch from 12 to 3. Uh, the fourth watch is it not just from 3 to 6. It, you've, done, uh, you've done 3 quarter of the fast. And would you what? You justify it. Father, thank you because this is the whole day. It's over. Once somebody has reached 3 o'clock, nothing is left. Father, thank you. You sustained me all through the three watches of the day. And now even as I take this food, bless it. All that I was supposed to receive for a full day fast. Do not take anything away. Let me have the full measure. And then you do what after that? You eat. Sometimes, do you know that this body is crazy? Sometimes it's only gari, just to soak gari in water and take. Sometimes what may be ready, what, what may be on ground was just, may be pap. There is a way pap, it hasn't, you know, pap doesn't have any aroma. But sometimes when you are hungry, pap will begin to have aroma. Sometimes it is ordinary coconuts. You see that coconut as if you have never seen coconut before. Your eyes will be bulging out. There is a struggle in the inside. The body is in trouble. Then you justify and say, it is where? You break the coconut. When you have eaten the coconut, you, are, you end up finding that there are questions running in you. Now, what have I just done? What is this coconut? What has it changed? Praise the Lord. But that man was in that trouble. He was in that crisis as at that time. So he asked his brother to give him what was ready at that time. He was not ready to wait for what was not yet ready. And the brother who was younger and in Hebrew culture, if any man was first born in any family, he had a birthright. Automatically, by reason of his birth, he had a right. The firstborn was a special child. He was given a special honor. This was given to him by reason of the fact that he came out first. That he was the firstborn. That was the ticket that gave him right to the birthright. According to the law of the Hebrews. That included for him a double portion of the family's inheritance. Every time anything was shared in, in a Hebrew family, the firstborn will take double portion. If they were going to give anything, they will count it. If, they were going, if there were only two children, for instance, like these two children, they, the father will put three portions. He doesn't have three children. He will put what? Three portions of the same thing he wants to share amongst them. Then what? The firstborn will take the two portions and the young man, the other person will take one portion. And what was it? The privilege of being the firstborn. Two portions. A double portion of inheritance. Even when the person died, they didn't need to write a will. The will is already written by reason of the law. So, everything the father had, they just needed to count everything and divide them and make them three pieces. And the brother, I mean the firstborn, will take what? Double portion. So, if you were in the state of the younger person, and you watch that everything that came in the family, they divided it into three and the other person took two. Meanwhile, the same blood is running through your veins, coming from the same family. That man is, your, is the father of that guy and you, he, you, that woman is the mother of that guy and you also. You don't come from any other family and you are not carrying a, a, an inferior blood. How are you going to feel? The natural person will have a tendency for jealousy. The natural person will have a tendency to wish that this guy will die so that I can become firstborn. If he has his way, he will do anything to eliminate the firstborn because it is this guy that is the obstacle to my getting the things I should have been getting. He, I watch him with my eyes, pick two portions, and I can't do anything about it. So that day when this boy was hungry, when he was in crisis, when he had a trouble, 
when the trouble was to him like a sentence of death, that for him was the opportunity that Jacob had been waiting for. And he said to him, friend, this too is not available to you. It is my own stew. I prepared it to take care of my own need. But if I must give it to you, we have to, buy, we have to have, strike a bargain. There is something I have that you crucially need. And it is as if, if you don't get it now, you are going to die. But there is also something you have that I need. So if we can just do an exchange program. If we can do an exchange program. You solve my problem and I will solve your problem and that will be fair play. And he said to him, give me your birthright today. Will it out to me? In other words, say to me that you are no more the firstborn. And that all the privileges of the firstborn from today, they become my own. And I'll give you this to you. In fact, if you like, I can give you all of it. And the brother, because of the trouble of today, he forgot that though weeping may endure for a night, that joy comes in the morning. He forgot that though we are pressed on every side, that yet we are not crushed. He forgot to say like Jesus, when they came to tell him his friend Lazarus was sick as unto death. Critically sick. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. Therefore, I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to remain here. And he stayed there how many more days? Two more days. He did not allow the news of what they told him about Lazarus to put pressure on him and get him to behave in a way he's likely not to have behaved or in a way he will regret. Instead, he said what? This sickness is not unto death. And having spoken that, he brought everything under control and quenched the urgency of the matter. Listen to me, friends. There are times when certain situations come your way and because of the way they come, you find yourself in the urgency mode. It's like, if this thing is not done today, it may never be done. If I don't get this thing now, I may never get it. If I don't eat this thing now, I may not eat it. I may never eat it. If I don't grab this thing now, it will go. And you find yourself in that situation. There are certain times you have pressure from health. It is as if you are going to die. Listen to me. It's only as if. That scripture says that the man, Esau, said, I am about to die. Brother, you have not died. If not so, then they see death. Nobody for die. He said to himself, I am about to die. This hunger will kill me if I don't eat anything now. But that was certainly not true. I wish he heard the whisper of the word of God when God spoke through, through uh, Moses. What did Moses say? He said, tell Israel, a man does not live by bread alone. In other words, the life of a man is not in food. He lives by what? By the pronouncement of the word of God. I came to tell somebody here that your life is not in anything temporal. Your life is not hid in material things. That's why Jesus speaking and teaching, he said, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he does have. 
So friend, if you don't have any things right now, your life will not die because you don't have them. Don't allow anybody to deceive you and say because you don't have this and you don't have that at this crucial time, you must get them by all means or else you will die. I came to tell you, you will not die because your life is hid in Christ. Where? In God. So circumstances will not pluck you out of God because you are securely placed in God. Your life is hid. He said, if I don't eat this food, I will die. You will not die. You will not die. Man does not live by bread alone. The words that I speak unto you, Jesus said, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. So your life is not in any material thing, not in food. Your life is not in money. Your life is not in any situation. Your life is in God and your life is hid with Christ in that God. Therefore, at the utterance of the word of God, life comes to you. You will not die. So you can wake up and say to yourself, I shall not die but live and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That man said, if I don't eat this food now, I will die. Hear me. It is, there is danger in what you say because there is power in it. He said, if you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast to the sea, you will have whatsoever you say. The man has said, to himself I don't eat this food I will die no wonder it put him on the fast lane to do anything just forget about protocol forget about even the birthright forget about tomorrow listen we are not talking about tomorrow have you reached tomorrow let's deal with it today first I've not yet reached tomorrow I'm about to die now and you are talking about tomorrow I'm talking about a birthright is it not when I'm alive that I'm going to inherit what my father has and have a double portion of them if I die now uncle who will have all of those give me food now let me eat and settle the matter. You can have birthright. Just let me be alive. We have to be alive first before we have a birthright. That was the man, the way the man thought. He was thinking in a myopic manner. Why? Because he allowed the troubles of the now to over, overtake him and influence him. I went to Kaduna and people were talking to me. Friends, people were talking to me and said, Pastor, we are in real trouble, real trouble in this our country. I say, why? You say, the hope we have is in the church. If our country is going to be right, the hope we have, we thought, is in the church. And the representative of God in the church is the pastor or the pastors. They are the prophets of God, the apostles of God, the ambassadors of God, to whom we look up and trust that God will, through them, deliver and help us in the crisis situation that we find ourselves. So we don't know what to do when those men that we look up to have also become carried away and overwhelmed by the crisis we are going through because of which we are looking up to them for a hope by God. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, the person was saying that he heard that they gave seven billion naira for pastors and uh, leaders of churches to share ahead of the election and that they gave 12 billion naira to the imams to share ahead of the election and that the, my own fellow Baptists that they gathered in a church called Alvaca Fellowship back, back in Kaduna Alvaca Fellowship Baptist Church and that they shared they shared their own the pastors of the Baptists gathered there and shared their money I don't know out of the 7 billion what came to their own denomination but they gathered in one of their churches to share the money. I learned that one other church, I don't want to call the name, they called the, you know, they told me the name of the church, that they gathered, and when they gathered, in their own case, after that they had received the money, or their leaders had received the money, they sent text messages to particular pastors to meet at so, 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 and so parish. And they gathered there. And when they gather, some people got wind. The person who received text message, you know, every, people don't, everybody doesn't want to keep quiet. The person who received text message told the other and the other told the other. And those who received text message and those who did not receive text message, they all gathered at, at that place. And then when they saw the crisis, how many 
many of you receive text message? Put up your hand. And they say, stay this side. And they stayed, they came out, pulled out this. Those of you who did not receive message, come this side. They say, okay, who, who, who invited you? I, and, the, and somebody will say, are we not the same pastors of the same church again? What has happened that is now causing this segregation? Bottom line, some out of those who, were, who received text messages got 50,000 and above, some 35,000, some 40,000, some 20,000, according to your grade in the hierarchy. And then those who did not receive message, in order not to just let them go like that, they gave them 8,000 and 7,000 as accordingly. At least, you cannot say you came empty-handed. You went empty-handed. I heard, I heard that two churches stood out and said, none of their pastors is going there. Two churches, Roman Catholic and Deeper Life. Their reverend fathers did not go. Their, this other church, their pastors did not go. You can't partake in that kind of money. This is the same country where we are told that we have to tighten our belts, that there are going to be austere measures. And this is the same country where there is now so much money as to throw around. So we can't be part of that kind of money. What is the purpose? The purpose of all of this is that when you have received those monies, it was only one thing. You know, you enter an assembly through its leadership. So once you've gotten the leadership, then the leadership goes to say to influence the voting of their followership. And why are we why are we why are we clamoring for that money? Because of what? We find ourselves in crisis situation. Friends, there is a lot of hunger in the land. There is too much poverty in the land. The money is there abundantly, but it's in select hands. The generality of the people are suffering. And therefore, when money hits their hand, or when they hear that there is some money to grab, they forget quickly who they are. They forget quickly what is the situation of tomorrow. They even forget that they have children. They don't remember anything. They want what? The trouble of today needs to be quenched. 50,000 naira, you know what it will do? There are pastors who are being paid 7,500 naira a month. There are pastors who are collecting 4,500 naira in this country. There are pastors, missionaries who are collect, collecting 3,000 naira monthly. Uh, and if the person will wake up and find 50,000 naira, 50, naira in his hand, 50,000 naira will pay to, for how many years now? That salary of almost five years. Amen. 3,000 times 12. Eh? Abby? That's one year, Abby. Eh? So, 3,000 will give you 36. 36,000. The other one, the other balance is almost coming to another 36,000. You are paying the person almost two years salary. Ah, uh, who would not go like her? At least it will take care of the quote-unquote the problem of today. So Esau was considering what? The crisis of today. And it blindfolded him to what lies in his tomorrow. The birthright may not necessarily have been something he could take at that time because Papa was still alive. The birthright and everything in it was what? Was yet in the tomorrow. But listen to me. It was the better part of his life that was lying in his tomorrow. Friends, I came to tell every one of us here, ahead of the elections in this country, that the better part of our lives as a nation is in our tomorrow. And because of our tomorrow, we must not, we will never allow the crisis of today, the managing of today, the lying of today, the denials of today to rob us of the good thing that lies ahead in our tomorrow. I have very strong confidence that this country will never continue like this. I have a very strong passion that the story of Nigeria will never, never, never continue to be this ugly. 
I know that this country is loaded with God's blessing and God is not regretting putting those blessings here and he's not going to withdraw them because our days, our better days are still in our tomorrow. And therefore, I want to say to everyone here, let nobody give you 10,000 naira, 5,000 naira, 2,000 naira, 1,000 naira, even 50,000 naira, 1, 1 million naira to mortgage your tomorrow because in your tomorrow there is more than 1 million naira. Can I have an amen? There is more than 1 million naira in your tomorrow. Please don't eat up your bread that is meant to, that don't eat up your seed. I want you to, because your future is in a seed. Don't eat up your seed. Wise people don't eat up their seed. What do they do? They sow their seed and what do they do? They wait for it to do what? To germinate and grow. And then the time of harvest comes and the seed that they sowed and patiently waited, they do what? They reap not one seed anymore. They reap a whole big harvest. But that's why Bible says, if your mouth is given to eating bread, God gives you what? Bread. He gives bread to the eater. No eater in my church. In our church, no eater. We are what? We will live as sowers. He gives bread to the eater and gives what? Seed to the sower. I pray God raise you in Nigeria as a sower and not an eater who wants to solve the problem of now and mortgage their tomorrow. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have an amen? amen? I want to look, I want to see a Nigeria where my son, little boy, Tiki, does not have to go and look for cleaner pastures in another country, but rather he will dangle the carrot of Nigeria to invite his friends out there on the internet and say, come, this is where to be. So we go to the, we go to the polls this year. We go to the polls this week, Saturday. Let me say here, I know whom you should choose. I want you to open your eyes and check the person who shows elements or the persons who show elements of the fear of God. That's the man, that's the woman that we should vote for because in the fear of God, whoever, whoever fears God is wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Of wisdom. We don't want foolish leaders in this nation. We want wise leaders and wise leaders are those who fear God and because they fear God, they will not do anything evil to hurt both themselves and hurt other fellow countrymen that's the person you should look out for people who show the traits of the fear of God are the people that qualify for your vote, I don't care the party I don't care the party in my community at a point when they were doing uh, stand, a house of assembly election a particular line was very long because they believed in that boy. He had been tested as a counselor. And now he was moving to become a member of the House of Assembly. The line was very long in favor of him. He had performed credibly well. And they saw in him a man who could take them to the next level. The same day before, before, anything, before anybody said anything, the game changed. Some other persons came, you know, on one side and they were giving smuggling 500 naira per person right now, now, now. It's not going to come. You collect 500 naira here and now. Friends, I want to tell you, in my community back in Kaduna, 500 naira will prepare a good meal for a family and have balance. I'm serious. 500 naira. In Kaduna, if you go to Monday markets, in Kakuri, Monday market, you will fight with 500 naira. You will prepare a good meal. Listen to me. If you go to the Monday market in the pepper side, with 50 naira, just tell the Aosa man, Kabani Kaimia, with 50 naira, give him 50 naira. He's going to put some pepper, put some onion, put some put tomato, put this, put that, gather them together. Kaimia, that is the things, ingredients for soup. 50 naira will deliver it. In that community, hear me, 50 naira in the morning takes care of breakfast. Thirty naira does it also. You buy cocoa, cocoa that is pap, the one already prepared. You know, twenty naira pap. Huh? You buy ten naira sugar. They tie them in small, small uh, 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 polythene like this. Tie them small, small like this. Ten naira, five, five naira. Put you know, two, that two will give you what ten naira. And then you have what a balance of twenty naira out of fifteen naira. You buy a kara. 
50 naira has settled breakfast properly. So if somebody shows up for a family that has not known where breakfast will come the whole week and somebody shows you, say, here is 500 naira now. You know, the mind goes quickly to calculate 500 naira. That's breakfast for how many days? For 10 days. In my community, 50 naira does good breakfast. You drink cocoa and you are fine. And the cocoa is very well done. They put ginger inside. Put small garlic. The, 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 the aroma that comes out of it, very nice. It's not this naked pap, uh, pap that some of you do here. Naked pap. I call it naked because there's nothing else. Only the what? Only the, the corn. Only corn. Nothing. That's naked. Come to the north. If you want to drink pap, you enjoy pap. Even if you don't put sugar. They, they make it in such a way. There is what? Uh, uh, I'm telling you, what do they call it? Sweet potato. Sweet potato, they dry it. When they dry it, then in the time when they want to prepare, they grind it and put it as part of the ingredients. The sweet potato is sweet. Even if you don't put sugar, you can drink your pap. See, you see, Rhoda, she's doing her head like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. She knows what I'm talking about. So a little of that plus a little ginger. You see the aroma that is coming out of the pub, so nice, very refreshing. 50 naira has settled it. And if somebody's going to give you 500 naira now, you didn't do anything. Oh. You hear them say, ah, Mekai, what did you do? You didn't do anything. Somebody's just giving you 500 naira. Hear me, the 500 naira was your own. 500 naira he was supposed to keep for you today so that it will be put together and used for, to for your tomorrow. He's plucking it and giving you, and it looks to you like he's doing you any favor. He's not doing you any favor. He's stealing your tomorrow. He's stealing, he's stealing good education from your children. He's stealing good roles from you. Forever you will be dangling up and down and having back ache whenever you have to travel. That's what he has stolen from you. Don't give it to him because of 500 naira. 500 naira cannot do good roads. Tell him to leave the 500 naira there. Let him leave it there. Let him leave all those monies there and put them to good use so that you can have your today and tomorrow. I can tell you that you can eat today. In Nigeria, you can eat good food today and still have a good tomorrow if they will do what is right. Righteousness exalts a nation. But what? Sin is a reproach to any people. I want you to look out very well. Please, the time has come when you cannot be deceived again by the troubles of tomorrow. Every time anybody shakes you or tries to deceive you on the issues of your today, tell them man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Tell them my life is not in the hand of any man. My life is in the hand of God. God. And this crisis that you see today, it is not unto death. I shall survive. I shall live and not die to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hey, Lord, don't worry what you see. Tell them, don't worry what you see. I look like a poor rag today, but in this poor rag is a great future. And I'm not going to mortgage what lies in my tomorrow because I'm wearing rags today. There's a beautiful dress awaiting me, and I'm not going to compromise it on account of what. I'm suffering now. Suffering may linger for just a while. Every suffering has a time limit. And I know that the time limit is soon going to be here. It's going to expire. And then I'll enter in by, into my moment of glory. Therefore, keep your money. Keep your money. Keep your money. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to beg you in the name of the Lord. The time has come for you to decide for a change of unrighteousness for righteousness. When I talk about a change, I'm not talking about a political party slogan. I'm talking about what? The real change of God. The real change of God. When the righteous rule, what happens? The people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, what happens? The people, they cry, they die, they cringe in trouble. And we've borne this trouble for too long. Hear me, we've, we've borne this trouble for too long. Ah, that I have my children in a private university today. I don't listen to me. I don't pride myself by it. Instead, I lament. I feel pain that I have to send my children to a private university and yet pay tax to, to, to maintain the, the public university. I have a portion in there, but somebody has made it impossible for me to send my child in there because he's going to go there and come out with nothing and nothing to offer. And then he goes back. The same person who built me the, private, the public university 
university and got it in the shape and in the state of which it is today, he stands at the end of the road there and waits for my son to finish university. That same university that he owns and then he, the boy comes out of school and he checks the, the certificate and says, no, those of you who come from public universities stand on one side. Then he is looking for those who brought a certificate from Canada, from America, from, J from uh, Switzerland, and from United States of America. That's first set. Then second set, those of you who come from a private university in Nigeria with first class. That's second set. Then the third set, those of you who come from private university with second class lower or second class upper, come third. And by the time they finish counting, they are the, the jobs are over. Then my son that went through the public university is told that you will hear from us. You will not hear anything. Ah! Ah! And every day when the time comes, we soon forget. Church, I am pained by the capacity of adjustment of Nigerians. Sam Adeyemi was talking here some years ago. He said Nigerians are like the toad put in water. If you drop a toad in very hot boiling water, right into a boiling water, he jumps out immediately. He said he wanted to do what Nigerians do exactly what you do tonight. They do to Nigerians. Put the toad in cold water, put him over a stove, and put the fire just very mildly. And the water begins to change temperature a little. And what happens? The toad adjusts. And it's fine. Leave that water in that situation for some time. Adjust the temperature and get a little higher. And what happens? The water becomes a little bit heater, hotter. It does what? It adjusts a more. Some more. And then just give it some time. Raise the fire a little more. What does it do? It adjusts some more. Keep on doing that until you will cook the thing there. Before it knows it is dead. Why? It kept on adjusting and adjusting. And adjusting. Friends, that's what Nigerians are doing. They come four years after they have done whatever they are doing. We do what? We start to adjust. And then we adjust. And then we adjust again. Before you know it, by the third year of that administration, we have forgotten where we are coming from. And the complaints and the cries we are crying. What have we just done? We have adjusted. You say it's a Nigerian factor. We have nomenclatures, we have statements that we use to qualify the situation that makes us feel okay. It's a Nigerian factor. Ah, Nigerian here now, bear, bear. Brothers and sisters, I challenge you in the name of the Lord, let's not adjust anymore. Let's not adjust to error. Let's not adjust to wickedness. Let's not adjust to deprivation. Let's not adjust to lying. Let's not adjust to cheating. Let's not adjust to false promises. Let's not adjust to anything that is hurting us today and having a great promise to hurt us in our tomorrow and hurt our children. I want to say to every adult that is in Nigeria and as represented in this message today that posterity will hold you responsible if you continue like this and hand over to them a country they cannot stay in. You are not going to stay here forever. I want to say here what? None of you is going to stay here forever. Those of you who are already 60, I'm not prophesying death to you. Maximum, maybe another, another 40 years, you are 100. Some of you at, at that 100, you are by yourself praying, what am I still waiting for? You are asking for death yourself. But I want to say, when you go, you don't take Nigeria with you. When you go, there is a younger generation you are leaving behind. That's why Isaac, when he was about to go, he said, son, I want to bless you. He wanted to leave something that will keep Isaac and make him, and that will keep Esau and prosper him in the tomorrow. Friends, you need to be careful. Don't worry about your troubles of today to the point where you forget that after the troubles are over and even if you are gone, that there will be a younger person you are leaving behind. I pray to God that Timothy would outlive me. I pray to God that Eunice will outlive me. I pray to God to leave Tiki in here. But what kind of place am I leaving her in? 
Beware of the troubles of today. Beware of the deprivations of today. Beware of the sufferings of today. I want to say here with no sense of, with no apology, that the suffering of Nigerians in our today is artificial. It's not put on us by God. It's man-made. And not just man. It is what? Fellow Nigerians made. It is fellow Nigerians made. But I like to thank God that at every time we have to go to the post, that's an opportunity to make a statement. Let's make that statement. Please, when you go Saturday, vote God. Vote God. By that we mean what? Vote the ideals of God. So that this country can move forward. I'm praying that nothing will shift the election again on Saturday. This time around it will hold. I say it will hold. Nothing will shift it again on Saturday. It's going to hold. And I pray in the name of Jesus. This country will not disintegrate. There is a statement that Nigeria will disintegrate in 2015. I prophesy in the name of the Lord that this country will still be together. We will still be one, one nation. We will still be one people. We will still be a, an, an undivided un, uh, entity. We, should, we shall still be together. I promise I will see you in this church next Sunday. Yeah. You will be here to worship. You will be here to worship. You will not disintegrate. You will not be running helter skelter. You will be here to worship because all will go well. But when you go out to vote, please vote for God. Vote righteousness in place. And the fear of God in place. And God vote justice in this nation. It's time to vote out any, any form of greed. It's time to stand on the way of any greedy person. Use your PVC to stand on the way of any greedy person. That you won't enter. You won't enter. Please, if you line up and anybody wants to give you any money, tell them, sorry, I don't need this money now. Go keep it for us. So we can use it for what? For a better today and tomorrow. Oh my God. Please, I beg you, don't remember that you have not paid your house rent. You will pay. Hello? Listen to me. That you have not paid it now does not mean you will not pay. If it is this money that they will, because as soon as these things come, ideas begin to run in your mind. And you know what the devil does? He opens the picture of your deficiencies and the areas of your need. And there are very many. 50,000 will not resolve all of them. And don't say to me, but pastor, at least if you are going somewhere, if you start with two kilometers, at least you have covered some distance. If you say that, you are already walking in what? This adjustment thing I told you. You are about to be fried in the pot. Hello? You are about to be what? To be fried in the pot. I like to say to all our young people, there are jobs in the country. Don't allow anybody to deceive you that there are no jobs. There are jobs, but they close them up. Go to Kaduna Town. Kaduna Town was a boiling point for everybody in the north and even in the south. It was very well known for textile industry. I can name not less than 10 textile industries at that time, right now as I'm standing here. But I want to say to you, not one of them is working. Not one. They have all killed them. And you know what? They have killed them, and because of the hunger situation that they have put us, fellow Nigerians in the environment, young boys and girls, young boys who have nothing to do, they have stolen into those companies in the night, and stolen the, all the all the vital components of the machines broken into them. If you go right now to go to Arewa textile industry, you will be, you will be ashamed. You, if you knew it, what it used to be in those days, you will cry. I passed there this week or this last week. And I want to tell you the truth that it was deliberately put in that state. People are suffering. And then they said, the people have nothing to do. Then they began to ride Okada. In Kaduna town, Okada everywhere. Then from nowhere, somebody woke up and said, you cannot ride Okada. 
you must buy Kekena Pep. And Kekena Pep is over 400,000. But he didn't give him the 400,000. He didn't make arrangement on how he's going to get the 400,000. The man who cannot find 15 naira to buy breakfast that I just described. And then you are now talking about 400,000 to buy Kekena Pep. So you closed the, in the textile industry where he was working. You closed the Okada. You closed the Kekena Pep. What are you asking him to do? What are you asking him to do? The next option is to do what? To go ahead and rob. That's all. You, either you become a robber, or like what somebody said, because this is up north, you become what? Boko Haram. Amen. I'd like to appeal with all young people today. Let nobody tell you there are no jobs. There are. People have closed them. But God will open them up. When you vote for God, when you vote for righteousness, the right, righteousness will open those opportunities again. And in this country, you will smile. In this country, you will rejoice. I, I remember those days, people used to change jobs. In a month, somebody can change jobs three times. Now, you hold the little one you have. Even when you are sick, and everybody knows you are sick, you are managing to still go to work. Why? If you make mistake, and they remove you from there, you are finished. I don't tell you lies. Say what? Go and create. They, are, they, are, they want you to go and create jobs. You have to put down the enabling environment for job creation. Which job are you going to, to, to create that doesn't need power? Electricity. Which job are you creating that doesn't need electricity? So, you have not put down the enabling environment to promote this creation of jobs. And you say, don't go and create jobs. You kill the ones that are existing, lock them up, and then keep it to yourselves. No. No. Friends, please, let's beware of the today's troubles. My, the bottom line of the message I'm sharing this morning is that the troubles of today will not kill you. They will not kill you. Don't let anybody deceive you. The troubles of today will not kill you. I say you will survive. You will not only survive, you will run to overtake. You will not only run to overtake, you will recover all. So don't allow the troubles of today to shake you. I want to live here with what, what, with the Lord, with what the Lord is saying to you. Be like Jesus. He said what? This sickness is not unto death. Therefore, it helps him not to do grigri. When the enemy came again and tempted him, he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. That gave him opportunity to do what? To settle down and think. If you allow anybody to dangle carrots around your eyes that makes you not to think anymore, they have robbed you of your today and your tomorrow. Say to them, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say to them, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say to them, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not. For God is with me. If you can take these scriptures, they will change your thinking. They will also change your behavior. You see, behavior is influenced by what? By thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart. So it's, the reason why Esau compromised that badly is because what? He thought he was going to die. He thought he was going to die without hunger. Can anybody tell me that that was the first time that Esau was hungry? Not at all. I don't believe that that was the first time he was hungry. So if he had been hungry before and he didn't die, why is he going to die now? But he thought he was going to die. And because he thought he was going to die, he sold what mattered most for just the stew of today. After eating that stew for that moment, did he ever get hungry again? Oh, sure, by the evening he was hungry again. He doubt, if it was lunch, by the evening he needed what? A dinner. And by the breakfast, by the next day, he needed what? A breakfast. But sorry, he had sold his tomorrow. In fact, he sold both his today and tomorrow. So if you collect 500 naira or you collect 50 naira, 50,000 naira, will it finish soon? Before that day, we'll finish. Is gone. Let us never, never, never allow the troubles of today to rob us of the glory of tomorrow. That's what God is saying. I pray for you that as you go to the polls this, this week, 
that God, by his spirit, will influence you to vote according to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. God loves Nigeria. His thoughts concerning this nation are thoughts of good and not of evil. And he's going to use you through your PVC to do what? To establish those good thoughts, those good plans that he has for Nigeria so that your children today and your children's children and children's children's children will rejoice in a Nigeria that of our dream and in Nigeria of our desire. May that be your portion. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, thank you for the declaration of your word. I ask, O oh God, that we shall never come under any terrible pressure to, to make us compromise the righteousness of God that we are supposed to be. We are the light of God. I pray that, Lord, you will make us a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. Grant, O oh God, that we will say like Joseph, I cannot do. He said, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? Father, O oh God, no matter who puts a demand on us to do the wrong thing, in order that they may get what they want and put us in greater trouble and make us compromise our tomorrow. Lord, I pray, grant us the resistance of Joseph. Joseph resisted even to the point of going to prison. Grant us that kind of a grace in the name of Jesus. And I pray today, O oh Lord, that as we go to vote on Saturday, establish righteousness in our nation. Establish the fear of God in our nation. Keep our country together. I pray today, O oh Lord, there shall be no disintegration. I pray today, O oh God, that there will be no scattering. I pray today there will be no violence. Father, O oh God, I pray today that there will be no rigging of this election. The will of God will be established for Nigeria. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those who are already prepared to do evil. Those who are already to prepare to steal the votes. Those who are already prepared to do things that will, will compromise the health of our nation and our tomorrow. God, I pray, disarm them by your power in the name of Jesus. Father, when they gather, because their gathering is not of the Lord, cause them to scatter, cause them to scatter, cause them to scatter. In the name of Jesus, by the Tower of Babel, you, cause, you put confusion amongst them and stop their evil agenda. Oh God, our Father, I pray that you will cause them to be confused, scatter their thoughts, and cause them to disagree with one another so that their evil agenda will not succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you. The troubles of our today, we hand them over to you. We say, Lord, address those troubles yourself. Deal with them yourself. Heal us of them and bless us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let the church say a better amen. amen. Let the church say a better amen. amen. Let the church say a better amen. amen. Now, very, very quickly, I'd like, to, I'd like to announce a little shift in our time for Victory Night this week. Victory Night is on Friday. We're going to start Victory Night by 4 p.m. and we'll finish by 7. We don't want anybody to be out in the night on Friday. We don't want anybody to be out in the night on Friday. Please, I want to appeal with you as much as possible, as the Lord helps you, if you can drive back home on, on Friday from wherever you are, even if you don't come for victory night, please don't be out in the night that day. This is not to say that we have had any indications of anybody fermenting trouble, but we don't want to be taken uh, unawares. We don't want any of our members to fall victim to any stray, stray bullets or any stray anything. I don't want anybody cornered one way in one place, one quiet place, and you know, hit by certain people who may have been uh, given money to do all kinds of things and cause mayhem. So i like to ask that, please, if not, if you have control over, the, over your time, don't be out beyond 7 p.m. Don't want you to be outside your home in the night on Friday. Amen. We are going to do victory night. This time around, it's going to be victory afternoon. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to do victory afternoon. Amen. 4 p.m. Gather here. Three hours with the Lord. 4 p.m. In the calendar, we are supposed to do 6 to 9. We are moving it up 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Before 7 p.m., we are sharing the grace so you can go back home. Amen. 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 And let me, if you check the bulletin, I particularly have written there that the victory night for this month is specially dedicated to what? To prayer for Nigeria. We'll pray for the elections. We'll pray for Nigeria. We'll pray for prior and post-election 
we are going to pray for not only this election that is coming on the 28th, we pray for the election that is coming on the 11th of, uh, of April. We want to pray and ask God to go ahead of us and all the thoughts and imaginations of men that God will not allow to come to pass. So please, I'd like to see all of you by 4 p.m., as many of you that can join us 4 p.m. on Friday, please, I would like you to come and we will pray together and pray and see Nigeria into a successful election both now and in April, and God will glorify himself. Amen. God bless you real good. Thank you for spending these few minutes listening to the word of God. We pray that his grace and glory will always be with you. Have a lovely week and see you next time.